back in the day, in high school, we used to hang out with white people. <laughs> one day, one of my Aussie mate, Wayne, said to me, You want a You're pretty cool for an Asian. What do you mean? It's like, you know, you're Asian, but you're not Asian Asian. You're not one of us. And guys, never in my life ever ever felt so privileged and oppressed at the same time. <laughs> I feel Aussie sea saints are trying to be so multicultural that it comes off offensive. But I get this non Vietnamese mate, right? Try to lecture me where the best Vietnamese friend role is. <laughs> so, bro, I've got to try this authentic Vietnamese dog rolls. <laughs> it's nice crispy bread, nice juicy pork cracklings, pickled carrot, cucumber. I was like, wow, that sounds too bad. And it's like tomatoes. I was like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> Avocados, drizzle mayonnaise. I'm like, dude, I'm pretty sure I've been missed food joint referring to Subway. <laughs> that same mate invited me over for dinner and served me a bowl of Vietnamese beef noodle soup. It's actually quite delicious. I was offended. Not because he served me my traditional dish, but he served me a bowl on a kitchen bench while all his family and friends sat on the dinner table eating pieces. <laughs> People say it's very hard to tell the difference between a Chinese and a Vietnamese. I don't think that's true. In fact, it's very easy to tell the difference between a Chinese and a Vietnamese. What you gotta do is walk up to the car and see what class Mercedes are driving. <laughs> C class, they're Vietnamese. The S class, the Chinese. And say E class, the Singaporean. <laughs> Back in the day, you didn't see many white girls go for Asian guys. Because Asian guys were stereotyped as being nerdy and weak. But nowadays, things have changed. In fact, a lot of white girls go for Asian guys. Because white girls know when they date an Asian guy, they're either themselves an accountant, an engineer, a doctor, or a drug dealer. White girls would be like, why sell a shit box of a Commodore? I can drive Mercedes Benz. <laughs> so I'm Vietnamese Australian, but there's some disadvantages just being Vietnamese Australian. For example, when I fly from Vietnam back to Australia, I'm going to stop by border security. So pull me aside, open my luggage. Pull out dried fish, <laughs> pull out the pickled onions, and push the suitcase back to me. And that, guys, is how smuggling cocaine. <laughs> back in my teenage years, I used to be a meth addict. And as a meth addict, it was very hard to hide from my mum. So I stopped running with her. I was like, Mum, I love doing meth. <laughs> <laughs> to my surprise, she was upset, she was supportive, she even gave me a weekly allowance. <laughs> but later in my life I realised that every time I said, I love doing math, she thought I said, I love doing maths. <laughs> <laughs> Back in my teenage years, I was also a porn addict. <laughs> But porn really ruined my self-esteem and my self-confidence. Because every time I watch porn, all you can see on the screen are big, massive dicks. <laughs> when I look down, I'm like, no girl would ever want this. <laughs> Stop watching Japanese porn. <laughs> the only porn I watch these days is midget porn. <laughs> Do you find it straight? You don't find many Asian kids with Down syndrome? It's very much spot one since all Asians look alike. <laughs> it's also very hard for doctors. To diagnose an Asian kid with Down syndrome. This Asian kid with Down syndrome was still 
have a higher IQ than the average Australian. <laughs> Welcome back on stage to host the evening, my mate, Jason Chong. Yeah.